Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to be eating you guys' fear foods for an entire day. If you're not familiar with what a fear food is, basically when you're in recovery from an eating disorder or from just a bad relationship with your body, you will have certain foods that you consider bad or you know scary foods and most of the time these labels that we carry around fear foods are based on just notions that diet culture has projected into our lives and into our brains about what foods are good and what foods are bad what foods we shouldn't be eating and if we eat them we should feel guilty or we should feel ashamed or we should feel scared so my hope with this video is to show you that eating these foods isn't as scary as it seems but also to show you that you can still work out have an active lifestyle take care of yourself and drink enough water and do all these things but it's okay to also want to go and get a bagel or a croissant or treat yourself to a burger every now and then and to eat the things that scare you because the more that you do this the stronger you get and also as we're going through the video and as I'm eating these fear foods I'm going to be talking about some of the mindset shifts that have really helped me improve my relationship with my body and with food I basically did a poll on my Instagram a little while ago and I asked you guys what your fear foods were so I have a list with all of you guys it's fear foods and I'm gonna be essentially basing what I eat on this one of you guys said bread and bagels and so that's what we're gonna have for breakfast I'm going to try a new bagel store near me and I'll bring you guys along let's get it blocks uh, yes and then also cucumber and tomato please I'll do an iced coffee with almond milk thank you we got a bagel for Pedro a bagel for Ma. I think this one's mine why is my hair so weird I thought it's probably not I'm just judging it I got Pedro a bacon egg and cheese he's a bacon egg and cheese guy and then I got very special sandwich and I'm kind of hitting on a few different food rules with this here's the bagel everything bagel with chive cream cheese cucumber tomato and smoked salmon and with this one I'm hitting on bread bagels dairy lactose I also used to be scared of bagels so starting to eat bagels has completely made me a happier person more strong so let's give this a little taste the big bagel Mmm. 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 I wanted to add a little bit more creamer to my coffee, so I'm using my coconut creamer that I love. Yummy. I was in a meeting. I'm back. Now I'm going to take another bite of my bagel and share a little food freedom takeaway with you guys. The thing about a relationship specifically to fear foods is that it's rooted in fear, right? For so long, for so many years, for so many decades, society at large, marketing companies, brands, whatever, have caused us to fear a part of our nourishment. And diet culture overall has labeled certain foods as bad foods, unhealthy foods. But what happens is then it triggers this spiral of shame where you will eat a quote-unquote bad food and then you feel like you are therefore a bad person because you ate that food and for so long like that was my biggest struggle and I remember when I first started healing my relationship with food and going to therapy this was something that I had to really realize about myself was that I was judging myself and food so much I was carrying labels around and calling foods bad and good in my brain and it's funny because even after I became aware of that I ended up going down even more of a spiral and cutting out even more foods like dairy like gluten from my diet even animal products and animal meats and I've just had to slowly peel back the layers of that and I think breaking my own fears around these foods has been so empowering because it's helped me realize that one I deserve to eat these foods and two, food is a source of joy. It's, it's not something you're supposed to be using only as a means to an end, right? Let me cut out this food so I can look skinny. But is that going to bring you happiness? Or is it going to cause you more pain to be around people who are eating bagels and who are enjoying their lives and you're just deep down in this spiral of self-judgment and self-hatred because you're denying yourself these pleasures? 
Mmm. So delicious. <laughs> and even like as I'm sitting here, right? Eating this bagel. It's a pretty big bagel. It's a thick bagel. And I'm slowly, as I'm eating this, tuning into my own body and tuning into how I feel. Am I still hungry? Do I even wanna eat more? Do I wanna, you know, save this the rest of this bagel for later? And that's the thing, when you're eating your fear foods, one, that doesn't mean you have to eat the whole thing if you are, you know, tuning into your fullness levels and you feel full. There's a big difference between stopping in the middle of a meal and realizing like, I actually am full now and I wanna save this for later, which is coming from a place of self-love instead of, oh, I can't eat this whole bagel because it's bad if I eat the whole thing. In a way, it's worse if you overstuff yourself just because you're not letting yourself listen to your own body. That's what I'm trying to practice, like trying to figure out how full I am. A lot of the times when I eat bagels, I do feel full pretty quickly. So I often do this where I'll save the other half. And that's, you know, being intentional with how much I'm eating and how I want to feel after I finish eating it too. So allow yourself to have the bagel, to have the bread, to have the lactose. Like there is nothing wrong. It's not scary. Hmm actually quite delicious <laughs> and cheers i'm so happy i'm gonna get to work and i'll catch you guys soon it is 2 40 2 45 i'm in like soho area now i'm going to the fit flop store to film some content and i thought it'd be the perfect idea to come here and to get a slice of pizza for lunch some of you guys had pizza and like bread and cheese and stuff like that so i think this will be perfect been really wanting to try prince street pizza here so that's where i'm going and i think it's gonna be amazing so come along with me i realized i'm kind of hangry because i was getting frustrated it would take it was taking so long but it's here look at this cheesy goodness wow i got the four cheese so let's dive in Mm. That is so good. They have some farm. It tastes so good. Mm. The more your foods that you try, the easier that it gets over time, and the more confidence that you build on yourself in your relationship with food, the more you're able to say, like, fuck you, diet culture. <laughs> I want this pizza, I want to eat it, and you do it, the more empowered you become because the less you're controlled by the rules in your head, by the restrictions. And it does take, you know, some like challenging of your own self to do it, but it's worth it. I even think about myself, like, I normally don't have a slice of pizza in the middle of a weekday, like, for lunch. But I don't feel any guilt, any shame for having one right now. And this is bringing me so much joy. It's a pretty popular spot here in New York and I totally understand the hype now. It's perfectly doughy and cheesy. I like pizza slices with like a thick bread. So this is the spot. Mm. <laughs> if you're someone who skips the crust. Lava, yeah, la. la canta a capella. Dime en portugués todo lo que quieras. Yo te llego en cualquier manera. Semi automatic. Shoot my shot in verse until I had it. Fuck the drama, she was cinematic. Speak to me in tongues like a fanatic. I just did a berries class. It was so good. I have a bunch of credits that I was gifted because I did an event with berries once and they gave me like 10 credits to use. So I knew I was coming into the city today. So I booked the class and it was amazing. Hard as always. I'm super sweaty. I did notice that, you know, because what I've eaten today is a little bit heavier, like the bagel, the pizza, etc. It was a little harder to do the workout. I feel like normally in a day to day, like I'm not eating, you know, these fear foods for every single meal, like, like in a more balanced way. And so, that was definitely a little bit interesting to observe in my body like from my sense of self-awareness how it affected me but still it's all been worth it no regrets things so good i love the post-workout endorphins always i'm gonna go home now take a shower relax a little bit do some editing and do some more work It is dinner time. 
I'm so excited because we're going to be smashing so many food rules all at once. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is pouring myself a nice glass of Olipop as I cook. I freaking love Olipop and the reason I'm going to be drinking it is because it is liquid calories. And that's something that someone had said they were afraid of. So let's start off with that first. Because I'm thirsty and I need a little beverage while I cook. And I'm going to pour it into a wine glass because it just makes everything better. Do you hear that sizzle? So good. I love myself some Olipop. This is my favorite flavor, it's the ginger lemon. It is so good. Let's give it a little taste. <sighs> Always hits the spot. Always hits the spot. Mmm. So here's what's going down. We're going to be making pasta, obviously. I love rigatoni, it's my favorite. So I got some of that. I'm just gonna add a little bit of chicken to it because I made this chicken yesterday and it's my mustard chicken and I used the recipe for my meal prep. It's in my second meal prep if you're interested. It's all in there. I'm also going to be adding just Brussels sprouts. I mean, I just wanna use the food that I already have. So I'm gonna add some fiber to the pasta. I also have cherry tomatoes which I'll add. I'm debating if I should make the noodles with just butter. Honestly, butter and parm, or if I should do like my pesto, but I could do a little different pesto recipe because I have some avocado I think it's still pretty good. Some people said avocado is your favorite food, so I think I'm going to make a little avocado, basil, like garlic, lemon sauce, and then I'll throw parm on top. I think it's going to turn out really good, so let's get it started. This is a trick. I'm going to add water to this boiler I'm just going to boil my water first so it's faster and then I'll add it to the pan and start cooking the pasta I'm just gonna take the basil that I bought at the store and I'm gonna wash it all and then I'm gonna start making the sauce in the blender Time to get creative with the rest of the sauce because I have never made pesto this way and I'm about to do it. It's a juicy lemon. Look at that. I'm gonna add the hemp seeds. I have one tablespoon here. I'm gonna throw in like three tablespoons of hemp seeds. I think if I take out the top layer of it, it will still be good. Yeah, it is. It's still pretty good. It was just that top layer that wasn't looking cute. So one half of an avocado, I'm gonna throw that in there. And I'm just gonna blend this and see what turns out. The teeniest drop of water. Let's add in our noodles. So I always forget to salt my pasta water. And I'm gonna add the rigatoni. Really delicious. Minced garlic. My favorite. Just a little bit. Like that much. Now we're gonna blend this again. Brussels and my chicken. Wow, look at that. Oh, it looks so good. Wow. The Brussels sprouts, which I made yesterday in the air fryer. We're gonna throw some Parmesan cheese. Oh yes. This looks unreal, oh my gosh. Mmm. Mmm. 
Mmm. Mmm. It's perfectly al dente. Mmm. Today has really made me think about my past self, primarily when I was like 18, 19, end of high school, first year of college. I was in the peak of my, you know, eating disorder. I was really not happy. I really didn't like myself. I was restricting myself so much. I had completely cut out carbs from my life. So everything that I ate today, the bagel, the pizza, the pasta, like that was not allowed. Like that was my biggest food rule was no carbs. And I was crazy about it. Like I would be at dinner with my family. They would ask me to eat the bread because they obviously were worried about me and they wanted me to eat. And I would straight up pick fights with them. Like I would fight with them over bread because I was so you know, intense and adamant about not eating it. And now here I am, an almost 24 year old, because I turned 24 this week on the 21st, completely free and guilt free while eating these things. And I feel like I've come so far in my journey with food, especially with the things that I used to be very strict around, like carbs. And I feel so proud of who I've turned into and to have this strength and hopefully if you're watching this and if you're struggling with food and you're restricting and you're not allowing yourself to eat certain foods because they make you afraid or if you've cut out foods completely from your life like carbs this is your reminder that restriction and going through extremes and being in a 0 to 100 mindset that is not healthy it's much healthier much more balanced to allow yourself to eat those things related to this concept of zero to 100 something else that i've been thinking about is this concept of bouncing back right i think a lot of people if they overeat on something or they you know have a cheat day quote unquote the pressure that they put on themselves the next day is to go through the other extreme where they restrict themselves a ton and they have to make up for that food that they made so either they cause themselves to work out and do crazy crazy workouts or really not eating enough at all the following day and that's not healthy either right and i think a past version of me would have done that like would have felt that way because of so much guilt and shame around these foods if i had had a day of eating like i did today like i would feel extremely guilty the next day i would completely restrict myself when i was 17 18 years old and the version of me now I'm like gonna treat tomorrow just like any other day. Like I'm just gonna eat normally. I'm gonna continue with my normal routine, doing the things that I do every day and eating the same. Like I'm not gonna eat less than I normally do tomorrow because I ate pizza, a bagel and pasta today and had dessert, which I will have in a bit. That's also really important to note. So cheers to that, cheers to growth. I'm going to enjoy my dinner. I'm gonna watch a little bit of YouTube and then I'll catch you in a little bit while I make dessert. Of course I'm watching Ava. Are you kidding? Like, new video from Ava? You bet I'm gonna watch this now. That dinner was so good. And I really loved the combination between the pasta, the chicken, the Brussels sprouts, the cheese on top. It was chef's kiss. And I'm going to clean up my kitchen and make myself some dessert. So come along with me. Dessert. Okay, so the dessert that I'm gonna make is a little date and strawberry platter with nuts and nut butter I kind of just wanted to make some stuffed dates because I'm obsessed with stuffed dates. They're so good These are the dates that I have been using What I love about these dates is that they're perfectly chewy. It kind of just tastes cut like caramel, which I love I basically open them up because they have a seed in the middle. So I take that out. I'm gonna do two dates today I kind of like microwaving them for like just a couple of seconds because they get really warm and it's so yummy so I'm going to do that legit for like just a few seconds so that was like 15 seconds now they're warm most delicious almond butter so I add the almond butter on top of the date just a little bit of cacao nibs a little bit and I add it on top so it adds a bit of crunch if you don't lick the leftover nut butter, who are you? I got the most amazing strawberries from the supermarket, from Whole Foods. I don't know why I'm putting this, even though it's in a cutting board, but whatever. I just don't want to have to clean the cutting board. I 
Dessert is ready. It's looking so good. Have my strawberries and my dates. My stuffed dates with nut butter. And I just wanted to say I really enjoyed filming this video because it has pushed me outside of my own comfort zone. I have been on this journey of eating my fear foods and conquering them but to eat so many foods that are your fear foods in one day has really just shown me that like you're capable of healing and you're capable of eating the foods that you love and eating foods that scare you and you're able to eat them in a whole day it has really shown me that we are way more powerful than we think and these food rules do not have to control your life you're bigger than the food rules and you deserve to enjoy all the foods that exist in the world Especially ones that you subconsciously really want to eat and you're not allowing yourself to eat. Let's do a little taste test of this date. Mmm. Mmm. All right, my friends, that is it for today's video. I hope that this video helped you in some way, in some shape or form. Maybe it showed you that food doesn't have to be so scary. Maybe watching me eat these foods that you consider a fear food helped you get the courage to eat them too. Or maybe this video just showed you that recovery is possible and that if you are in a tough relationship with your body, if you are struggling with food, if you're struggling with restriction, hopefully this just shows you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that you are able to heal and that you are able to grow from this experience and to become so strong and I definitely want to share more about my experience with healing and I hope this video was fun to watch as well so definitely let me know what you guys thought in the comments and if it helped you as well make sure to like and subscribe so you can be in the loop of all my future videos and I love you all so much I hope you have an amazing rest of your week I will see you next week with another video and until then remember to take care of yourself I'm sending you a big virtual hug and I love you <laughs>